a you know reveal video or tour video soon on that. But I've got a lot of positive things. I don't know where to begin. Um, first, I'll begin. It's been about three days or so, but I just want to mention that we just had the the wonderful 25th anniversary of the original PlayStation, the Sony PlayStation that I loved and have enjoyed since that wonderful launch week of 1995. And uh, I, I can't believe it's been 25 years. My God, where does it, <laughs> the time go? Um, <clears throat> I'll just quickly show, you know, I've, these four games were, I think the four games that I had, if not, they were within the first week or two, but Twisted Metal was definitely the, the reason why I chose, like I've said many times, the PlayStation over the Panasonic 3DO. I had lovingly saved up $700 for that console, which today would be like spending literally like $1,500 or $2,000 for a console. I mean, can you imagine? That'd be like saving up for a gaming PC. That's how much money that was back in 1995. It was worth, you know, at least you know, $1,500. And instead, I spent $729 for these four games, a memory card, an extra controller, and I think I might have bought a few other little sundry items when I was there, but uh, this was what sold me on it. You know, I love this game, and I've mentioned it many times in many rants. Hey, Vinny, how you doing, bud? Be quiet. I'm trying to vlog here, bud. Uh, Road Rash, one of my absolute favorite games. This is the one game my wife likes more than any game I have. And anytime I want to put this in, she's down. Uh, Return Fire, which I, when I wanted to get this back, I get donated to Classic Game Room. This was the only game I asked for back, and thank God I did, because later Mark got rid of all the games and sold them, apparently, which is his prerogative, naturally, as, as they were, you know, gifts. But this one, it was, I couldn't find a copy. The only copy, there was one brand new for like $340 sealed, factory sealed, and I said, fuck that. So I kind of sheepishly asked Mark, I said, dude, I know it's been a while. We think I could at least have my Return Fire game back. And initially I chopped up the manual cover inside because I wanted everything to be in a jewel case. I didn't want these big, you know, cumbersome uh, tall boxes anymore. So I cut, took the manual and cut the picture down and fit it inside a jewel case and threw out the manual and tossed out the box. Which So over time I found Steve Baker actually helped me find the original box we found a manual separately, and I have my original game disc from 1995. This is the only game from 1995 I still have. And now this game sadly will not run on the like the PS2 Slim um, or the PlayStation 3. You have to play it on a PlayStation for it to run. Some of these games, including the first Twisted Metal, is kind of temperamental. You'll see weird little glitches on the screen and weird shit happens. But anyway. Wonderful game, one of my favorites for the original PlayStation. And then this Agile Warrior F-111, a fantastic arcade flight game. So cool. These games just bring back a flood of memories for me. I, I love these games so much. There's just something about the PlayStation, and I love collecting these tall boxes, too. They're just really, really cool. But, you know, 25 years has come and gone, and it just reminds me of how much I love gaming, how much I love the PlayStation brand and, and, and Xbox, you know, and I was a die-hard PlayStation. I went and bought the PlayStation 2. I never got a Sega Genesis. I did have a Super NES, which I bought at launch. Uh, I had played my friend's NES, but wasn't really crazy about the games on it, but the Super NES had Outlander. It had um, uh, F-15 Strike Eagle. It had a lot of games that I liked at the time because I was a young adult, you know, 30 years old when the Super NES came out, you know. So I, I was in my early uh, 32 years old when the PlayStation came out, I think around there, early 30, 32, 33 years old when um, the PlayStation came out. But anyway, uh, congratulations, Sony and PlayStation. It's been a wonderful 25 years. Uh, once the original Xbox came out, though, and I bought that, I kind of gravitated towards the Xbox racing exclusives like Forza. I never went back and played beyond Gran Turismo 3 because of that. And so I've had, I've kind of said, well, even though I love my PlayStation 2 and 1, and I've had like seven PlayStation 2s and five or six PlayStation 1s, I burn them out and buy another one, burn them out and buy another one, give them, give them to my daughter, buy another one. And so I love my consoles. But that first Xbox, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the performance, the enhanced performance on the original Xbox. And getting a 360 was a no-brainer. I had to wait a while because they sold out and you couldn't get them. And people were asking, God, $1,000 the first year on eBay. And the second year, they went down to 800 And I still wouldn't pull the trigger on it until 
I got it, I think, for like 349 The day it dropped down from 400 to 350 I bought it the day that Wolfenstein from 2009 came out, ironically. But anyway, <clears throat> enough of that. Just wanted to pay my due respects for a system and a series of games that I love very, very much. And I love the retro collecting for the PlayStation uh, 1 and the PlayStation 2 and even the PlayStation 3. I don't have... I Again, I, I, I'm kind of focused on the Xbox 360 for the multi-plats, but I love the exclusives, like, you know, the Twisted Metal <clears throat> reboot that came out, you know, 2010, 11 or so. I mean, to me, I would get a PS3 just to play that. Certainly Killzone 1, 2, and 3, or uh, Killzone Trilogy, um, you know, the Uncharted games. It's got it so good. But um, anyway, getting on with the really big news. So actually, right before I moved here to Idaho, right from uh, when I was in Sacramento, uh, they had a Cal Expo thing that I'd gone to the prior year with Steve Baker. We went at a wonderful retro expo. I met Radical Reggie and Adam Korlick there. Uh, there's a video I made about it about a couple years ago. And then <clears throat> last year, uh, Steve wanted me to go back again. I was really ill. I was very sick at the time, and I just couldn't go. I felt bad. Well, someone who I had been interacting with on YouTube was uh, Ty Lord Stevenson. He's got a wonderful channel. He does a lot of really cool retro stuff, and he does great pickups videos. I absolutely love his pickups videos. Uh, and anyway, I kind of announced, look, if anyone, you know, I don't know if anyone's in the area, but I've got this wonderful 27-inch Sony Trinitron. I repainted it. The thing has incredible picture. It's perfect. It's flawless. It's got built-in surround sound. You can do S-video, composite, component, everything with it. I love this TV, but it's just too heavy, and I can't, I don't want to risk getting it damaged, moving it to Idaho. I'll probably just get another one there. I might, you know, scale down, get like a 19 inch, but if anyone wants it locally, I'll gladly give it to you. Well, Ty Lord, you know, sent me a, a DM. He said, dude, I, I'd love to have that. I've always wanted to have a Trinitron. I'll take it off. I'm going to be up there I'm in Modesto, but I'll be up there um, for the, that Cal Expo, you know, gaming convention deal. <clears throat> and then I thought afterwards, I'll swing by and I'll bring my parents' little SUV up with me and I can have my wife's can help me we'll put it in the back and I'm sorry you're sick I wish I could you know visit with you I said no no come by the house if you know if you don't mind hearing me with a hoarse voice and sick I said I'd be happy to give it to you and help you load it up and everything so i had been looking forward to having him come by later and he called me from the convention hey, dude is there any games you want while I'm here and I go well the only games I was kind of hell-bent to get because I'm new to it is I've been looking for some um, N64 games I'm looking for a couple N64 games uh, you know, which I like the Star Wars ones and the two Duke Nukem games. And those are that's going to be the first N64 games I'm going to get. Well, dude, I, I can sure I can find you know some of those for you. And um, I said, well, if you find them, great. If not, don't worry about it. You know, and it's, I mean, I didn't want anything for the TV. That's not why I was giving it away. But he came back that night, picked the TV up, absolutely loved it. Guy was cool as shit. His his wife was cool. We both had great gamer shirts on. He seemed really happy to meet me. You know and and I just felt bad. I was sick. We helped him load the TV up and get it all padded nicely and everything. And I was just happy to see it go to good home. And since then, I mean, that next day he sent me a text. Dude, I love it. He's, you know, sending me picture texts of the TV playing PlayStation 2 games and playing old, you know, video uh, VHS tapes on it and stuff. He, he absolutely loves it. He sent me so many texts how much he loves the TV. And I said, I'm so happy it got a good home. I couldn't think of anyone better. I'd, I'd want to have it. Um, anyway, so he got me, I think it was like Duke Nukem, um, whatever, I can't remember, it was like the, it was the, either the Duke Nukem 3D, or it was the, um, uh, it was the other one, Zero Hour, I can't remember which one he gave me, but he got me one of those, and I think he got me the Rogue Squadron game for the, um, for Star Wars, uh, or Shadow of the Empire, it was one of them, I can't remember, it's been so long now, but, and I was absolutely late. I said, dude, you didn't have to do that. I was so appreciative. And I was like, wow, I can actually, and here's my, the beginning of a wonderful thing. Now I can start my N64 collection. Uh, and then I had posted a, a video, like a pickups video a week or so later. Oh, I'm so thrilled. I got these two N64 games. And then, you know, I went out and I bought some PS1 games or whatever. And I mentioned that I didn't. And I said, now all I need is an N64. And Steve uh, Tyler immediately sent me like a private message. Dude. I didn't know you didn't have an N64. Why don't you tell me? I've got a bunch of them. I'd be elated to give you one. And I said, dude, that's that's overkill. No, no, I insist. You gave me that great TV. I love that TV. And so he sent me this wonderful, wonderful N64. And I love the gray. I, I know they have all these wild colors and stuff, but I've always wanted a gray one. It's a perfect condition, 
I'm so happy. Tyler, thank you so much for this. Sent me a really nice controller with it. It works good. The sticks all work. The stick works good on it and everything. Very happy. And on top of that, I had another um, viewer that had sent me a whole bunch of controllers along with a brand new in this box factory sealed um, Xbox 360 e model plus tons of controllers for the Xbox and the GameCube. And I, I gave away my uh, Smash Brothers Special Edition brand new GameCube controller because I already had one new one that came with it. And I didn't need another one. Steve con collects controllers, so I sent Steve Baker and gave him the controller. And then I, they included two of these killer Brawler 64 N64 custom controllers. This thing feels like you're playing on a professional, like a really high-grade Xbox or a PlayStation controller. It's not cheap by any means. Really nicely made. Well, I don't need two of them. I mean, I just one is more than enough. As long as I've got the original controller and this, you can play a lot of games on it and kind of have a modern feel and it's easier to play a lot of fighting games and stuff with the brawler. And so I sent to um, um, Silverwings21. I know he's like the ambassador for the N64. He loves, in fact, he's trying to go after a world record right now and by God, he's doing it. So I sent him the other one of this, plus like Duke Nukem, Time to Kill or something, and he was elated. And then since then, he sent me a Atari 2600, you know, which I was in tears the night that I opened that up. It meant so much to me. I have a special shrine, which you'll see soon in my game room, just for that console. That's why I've got to get an analog TV so I can play that and enjoy it. He sent me a whole bunch of um, Atari 2600 games as well. But anyway, so I'm very happy with that. Ty Lord. Or, uh, Tyler, thank you a million, man. I mean, that was so cool for you. To, I've always wanted an N64 since my nephew brought his over, and I played Pod Racer on his. I've wanted one ever since. Very happy. Since then, I have the four Star Wars games for the N64, and I have both Duke Nukem games. I've already kind of met my little holy grail of games I want, plus I've got a whole bunch more that Steve Baker had sent me recently, which I had showed in a recent video. But anyway, <clears throat> so... You know, I had mentioned um, to Steve Baker, he sent, he, he collects so uh, hardware. So he has like every single variant of an Xbox, an Xbox 360, an Xbox One. He has like the Gears of War 5 edition, the Forza edition, the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order edition. He, he collects them. He collects, he just loves to collect hardware because he's kind of a, a techie IT guy. He does uh, computer PC stuff. So that's like his realm. So for him, c collecting hardware and controllers is where it's at. And so he showed me another new one, sent me a text, hey, dude, look, I just found this, you know, new, I don't know if it was Gears 5 or one of the special edition, uh, you know, Xbox One X consoles. Like, dude, where are you finding these things? I have looked high and fucking low everywhere through the Boise area. I've been to this four game stops and every game stop, two retro stores, all the Best Buys, departure. I cannot find new or used uh, an Xbox S, I, I, Xbox One S, I can't find, I certainly can't find an Xbox One X. I don't care about special editions. I'd be happy with the used one. I thought for sure I'd get one at GameStop, but because of the whole virus thing, I mean, retro games, consoles, even my game, the closest uh, GameStop, they have no controllers, new or used, none. We went to one the other night and they just got a whole new shipment of the new Red Camo, PlayStation 4, you know, DualShock controllers. They got a whole array of those. So they finally got a shipment in, but it's been hard, slim pickings around here. And it's not, and the problem with this area is you're kind of like Phoenix, Arizona. You're like in an island. So if you don't like something or there's something, not something locally, you got to drive like six hours to Salt Lake City for the nearest big city, you know. So if they don't have a Mexican restaurant you like in town, it's not like you can go to the neighboring town next door and you're kind of shit out of luck. So because of that, I've been kind of depressed over it. See, we'll do. Just go online and order one on eBay or Amazon. Some of the prices have gone up on them, but you, you can get them. I said, dude, look, get, getting games and DVDs and Blu-rays, I'll do all day long on the internet, but I do not buy any electronic stereos, ghetto blasters, VCRs, nothing new or used. I don't like to buy hardware over the internet. If I have a problem with it, I'm kind of fucked, where if I buy it at Best Buy or GameStop, if it doesn't work or something's wrong, take it back, get a refund or get another one, so I'm kind of nervous about that. He goes, dude, I got you covered. I'll, I'll find you one. So I thought he'd find me one and tell me, hey, I got one. I can get one for, you know, 100 and some odd bucks or 300 or whatever you want to get it, and I'd, you know, PayPal him the money or whatever, and he'd send it. I, that's what I thought he meant. Well, all of a sudden, I get a box in the mail, and right before it got here, he sends me a, 
a pink text of the tracking number. I go, this is, yeah, I got you uh, some guests coming your way. You know, I'm excited for you. And I go, what's this dude? And he told me, I'm, I got you an X. I said, dude, you got to be shitting me. So um, I, I have it all hooked up. I can't physically hold it and show it, but I'll show you the pictures here. He sent me up absolutely pristine, not a scratch on it. He says it's used. It looks new to me, but uh, uh, what to me is a new Xbox One X. I guess it's used. Flawless controller, the original HDMI 4K cable, all the, the, you know, the cords and everything that comes with it. And he even sent this really cool kind of a frosted controller where it's like a solid opaque and then it, you can, it frosts up into a clear and we can see through it. Very cool. So I got an extra controller. He's like, and then he sent me three games on top of it. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You didn't even have to send the games. It's like, see, he knows I've always wanted Dead Rising 3. This is one of the reasons why I wanted an Xbox One was because of Forza 2, especially Forza uh, Horizon 3, and, and Dead Rising, and then Rise, Son of Rome. Those are like the initial games that like, mm, I'd like to have an Xbox, an Xbox One. But I didn't get one because of the you know infamous... 2013 Microsoft reveal event and just put a really bad taste in my mouth and I just I've been just kind of swore off from Xbox I didn't like the direction that Forza was forcing the drive avatars on you and initially it was all about the DRM and that goddamn goofy connect thing and I just didn't like it it was kind of the Microsoft was kind of on my shit list it's amazing because I'm a fanatic I absolutely my favorite console was the original Xbox followed by the 360. I'm like a die-hard Xbox. I wasn't even going to get a PlayStation 4. I was going to immediately just buy Sight Unseen and Xbox One. The day that they had that reveal event, I took the day off. I remember going out and buying stuff to make a custom Italian sandwiches. I made sandwiches. I had my I had Pepsi ready. And I was all ready. Oh, good. This is going to be good. You know, I sit and watch this reveal, reveal, reveal event. And I'm, I'm sitting there, my mouth is just open, and I'm like, okay, I'm hearing TV, 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 ESPN, TV, Xbox on, the Connect, you know, and I'm like, where are the games? What the hell? What is this? What? It's going to be on all the time, and Don may trick off. You don't like it, you know, uh, you can't play your games and always online. Well, we got the perfect, you know, piece of shit box for you. It's called a 360, you know, enjoy. And I'm just like, wow, how condescending. So I, I really put a bad taste in my mouth. But, you know, in all its fairness, Microsoft listened to the fans. They listened to the criticism. Uh, they knew that they blew it. Sony got a fucking turbocharged slingshot while they're still sitting on the starting line with a dead engine. And uh, they've caught up. And they've what they did with the Xbox One backwards compatibility just recently, maybe six, seven months ago, I hadn't really paid attention. Anytime I'd see an Xbox One video or Xbox One X, yeah, whatever. I just kind of skipped past it and go to something I wanted to watch. Well, I started watching a bunch of Digital Foundry stuff on the backwards compatibility, and I'm like, what? You can play Red Dead Redemption 4K? You can't even play it on PC. What? You can play, you know, Splinter Cell Conviction in 4K? Now, it's not every game. They have these enhanced games or whatever. But it's very impressive what they have available. Um like Red Dead Redemption, I put it in the other night and started playing it. I've already gotten pretty far into it on the 360. I, I don't know if there's a way I can get my saves from the 360 over to the Xbox One, but I don't mind replaying because it's been so long I forgot the controls. And even though I have the new Red Dead Redemption 2, I really would like to learn how to go back to this, play this all the way through, because I played this for six months and never finished it, and then, you know, play the new one. Uh, but my God, it looks so good. It looks so good. The frame rate is so good. I almost blew a load across my coffee table when I put in this Forza uh, Horizon and played it in 4K. This is my favorite racing game of all time. I absolutely love the first the first Forza. Now, I have Forza 2. For the, they have the Xbox version only of it. You know, and I have a, I had the physical game. I think I gave it to my nephew or someone, and then I got the digital downloaded one uh, when I bought the um, one of my Xbox 360s. That was one of the games that was a digital download. I think that and Tomb Raider or something. So I already had it in the hard drive, and I even have the Fast and Furious expansion, all this stuff. But my God, this, to me, this is still the very first one is the best. I don't want to take my Lamborghini off road through you know vineyards. I don't care about that. 
even though I love the, you know, the kind of French Riviera setting of the second one, the first one to me, I have an extremely high achievement score, beat the game on hard, all the DLC. Uh, this is absolutely a perfection, the best racing game to this day. And to replay it on a modern console with a modern controller uh, on an expensive, you know, 4K 65-inch TV with HDR, it's just absolutely I was speechless. It's very impressive. Very impressive. I put Splinter Cell Conviction and started playing that and got carried away. I'm like, my God, it looks so good. Yeah, it's a little dated. Still, you can tell it's a 360 game. And they don't do it with all of the games, but it really is amazing. And it's saying nothing of, you know. So now I'm like, I was going to get that definitive edition of Mafia 2, but I've heard nothing but shit about it. And Solid Reps goes, dude, don't do it. If you get that Xbox One X, Play it on that. Believe me, it plays and looks much better. So I, I install this. And that's one of the things I love. And Black Ops 2, I mean, I'm going to have to go back and play it from the beginning. This is the only Star uh, Call of Duty game that I never finished is this one. I've, I've beaten almost all of them, even on the hardened level. And so I'm dying to play this. My nephew sent me back, mailed me back my strategy guide for this because I was having trouble with those fucking... Um, those goddamn missions, strike missions, that they you, you don't have to play them. Of course, I want to get the better ending, so I'm trying to get through them. And for whatever reason, I'm having a hard time with them. But I, I'm like a kid in a candy store with this thing. Steve, thank you so much. I, I can't tell you how... And what's, I know all you Xbox guys, oh, Dean, you're just now getting one shit. You're just learning this now. We've had them for years, you know? And I know you have, but I'm a late comer, obviously, on this train or, you know, cruise ship or whatever. This is a late deal for me. But I, I'm blown away. I mean, the quality of the Xbox One X with the 4K, I can play, you know, I can, now I can buy Mad Max Fury Road at the, at the 4K, you know, ultra high def Blu-ray of it. I already have like three versions of it already, uh, just on regular Blu-ray. So I'm going to be, I'm blown away. I can't wait to play that. It looks and sounds amazing. I just the quality of these games, and even the ones that aren't enhanced, my God, the frame rate's better. They just look better. Not all of them. There's a couple that have some some problems, you know. But for the most part, they look and play fantastic. Um, I, I went crazy. I went in and installed. I immediately took all every original Xbox game that I had. I had a whole pile of them and installed every single one of them, including a couple new ones, which I'll show in a minute, which aren't in this overview or this overlay of um, things that I have, unfortunately. I don't have anything. Um, I, I didn't have the pic these two games in this stack of pictures. I took a little, uh, you know, small B-roll of. But I, I'm very happy with the backwards compatibility. You can install one, eject it. It puts it into a queue. You immediately plug in the next one, put it in a queue, and then you go to sleep. And the next morning, they're all installed. I got like a hundred and five games. I don't know how many it is. I got over a hundred games. Xbox 360 favorite. I didn't do them all. You know, I still have a lot of games I could install. I don't want to eat up the whole hard drive, but I put all my favorites in, especially the original Xbox ones. My only complaint on it, as much as I love the console, is that all of the original Xbox games, you can play and you can put your save states, all your your gameplay saves, save to the, to the internal hard drive. Unfortunately, with the Xbox, you know, the Xbox 360 games, it's a little bit different. They saved the goddamn cloud, and so if all of a sudden you go offline and forget about saving, that's my only my only complaint. But you know what? I believe that Microsoft has listened. I think that they've they've made a big investment in this backwards compatibility program for a couple of years now, and now they're even and they immediately they've said right with the Xbox Series X, not with the now the new Series S. You're not going to be, especially when it's disc, it doesn't have a disk drive, you can forget about installing these. Now, you could go on the Microsoft Store and just outright buy for 15 or 20 bucks, whatever it is, and just buy the digital emulated versions and at least have those in your, you know, 500 gigabyte hard drives, 512 gigabytes, which is not very much. So I have a lot of issues. I know it's good. I know for people that maybe just play Fortnite and PUBG and that's all they play. It's great. You download a couple of big files, you know, and maybe you get one or two other games off the Microsoft Store. And, you know, it's, for casual gamers, it's good. And I think that their payment program is fair and reasonable and all that. I, I'm just going to get the Series X. I'm just not going to fuck around. And I actually like, I love the I love the uh, the white with the big black. I hate white consoles, but it does look good. I like the big black 
grill that it has. It just it looks very cool and it's kind of retro in a way. And it's much smaller. It certainly fits on my TV, you know, cubby a little bit better than that big block that they've got, that butcher's block that's like the size of three game cubes stacked end to end. But it, it looks nice. Look, I, I'm not a, you know, I've never complained about even the original Xbox One X, that the supposed VCR styling. I love it. I think the industrial design since 2013 is right on the money. I, I like the original one. I had no qualms with it. I like the controller. The, the controller sticks are a little small. It just takes a while to get used to it, but they work great. It's a it's a solid system. I, You know, my apologies to all the people I've ragged on over the years about the Xbox. I just was put off initially by it. But you know what? Microsoft has won me over. And I believe, that, like I said, they made an investment in this backwards compatibility. And they've mentioned it first and foremost with the new carrying on with the Series X that they will continue the program. I've heard rumors that you'll be able to play every original Xbox and Xbox Series game. I don't think that's true. I think that you'll be able to play the ones that they have available now and that maybe we'll be fortunate enough to where they can have some more enhanced ones or they'll add more Xbox original and 360 games to that list. We can only hope and pray of it, you know. And I know a lot of people are like upset. Well, yeah, what about this? They don't have this game and that game and you know, like they don't have my 2009 Wolfenstein and Singularity, you can't play on it. And they have Dirt 3, but they don't have my favorite. My second favorite racing game of all time is Dirt 2. For whatever reason, they don't have that, which I think is way superior to Dirt 3. But whatever. You know, it is what it is. It's okay. And then I certainly, and I, what's ironic is I do have some games that I have a few multi-plats for the um, PlayStation 3 that now I wish I had for the Xbox 360. Skate 3. I heard that you can play that enhanced, enhanced mode. So that, I'd sadly have a PlayStation 3 version. I just bought the Mass Effect trilogy for the PlayStation 3. If I had, you know, that, all three of those for the Xbox 360, I could do the backwards compatibility deal on that, which would be awesome. Because I've never played Mass Effect. I played that from the beginning on a brand new 4K TV. And I don't know if it plays them in 4K or not, but my God, from what I've seen on Digital Foundry, it looks really, really good. It performs quite well. I think one of them has a, a couple frame rate slowdowns, but for the most part, with few exceptions, most of the games play well. For whatever reason, like the new, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, State of Decay 2 plays worse on the Xbox One X than it does on the, the regular Xbox or Series S. I don't know why. Just That's odd. There's a couple games, not many count them on one hand, that have kind of worse frame rates on the Xbox One X than they even do on the 360. It's because they have that V-Sync. Well, that's the other thing. You get nine times the resolution of an Xbox 360 games, and you get V-Sync, so you can say goodbye to that playing, let's say, Far Cry 3 with all that fucking screen tearing. I love Far Cry 3, but my God, it looked bad. And I saw Digital Foundry did a whole thing on that Far Cry 3 Classic, and my God, they eliminated all the screen tearing. The frame rate is relatively solid, unless there's like a lot of shit going on the screen. It just, it takes a very slight dip, but very, very impressive. For, as a visual person that I am, I, I, I'm impressed. I know a lot of you guys don't really care, but, and again, like people say, oh yeah, but you can't play this game and that game. They don't have a backwards compatibility list. But you know what? I got two brand new Xbox 360Es. It's no problem. I can put in Singularity or Wolfenstein from 2009 or Dirt 2 or a myriad of other favorites that I have, you know. Heroes Over Europe, one of my favorite World War II flight games. My God, it's so good. And it's, it's I, so I have no problem. I get right in my same cubby, hooked up to the same TV. I've got, you know, a brand new Xbox 360E, plus right next to it, I've got a Series X. I'm sorry, the Xbox One X. God, these names are confusing. I, just, I just know it's an X, that's all I know. I know the new one, they'll have an X and an S. So, I mean, that I kind of get, but I constantly mix up the series versus the Xbox one. It's confusing. I, I'm more of a I'm PlayStation ecosystem, so it's bear with me. It takes me a while to figure it out. Oh, my God, I put in the first Battlefront and played this the other night and played my one of my favorite maps is the Bez. And it's so fucking good. It looks so good. It, it's amazing. I, I'm so happy that I can play... And then I've never, I've never played Republic Commando. And this, you can even have it play in widescreen instead of the 4.3 aspect ratio and it improved resolution, graphics. I think it's nine times the resolution, nine times 
of the fucking 360. That's imp impressive. Very, very impressive. And then it's got the V-Sync enabled, so you can say goodbye to screen sharing. It's, it's a very impressive system. You know, Steve goes, you know, you notice how much quieter it is in the Pro. To me, the my Pro, I've never heard it. I, I Everyone says, oh, it sounds like it's an F-18 taking off. I, I've never heard that. My my launch PlayStation 4 would make noises. That one I would hear noise. But this, my, my Pro's been quiet. Maybe I got a good one. I don't know. But but it is very quiet, and it seems to get relatively cool. It doesn't seem like it feels too hot. I open the door, I make sure it breathes, and I cut big hole with a whole big giant hole saw bit. I cut big holes in the back of my TV console, so everything breathes well. But anyway, very, very happy with it. Uh, Steve, thank you so much. You know, as people think about uh, Xbox, what do they, they think about Phil Spencer or that major fucking Nelson guy and all that? Those are really, they seem like genuinely nice guys. I don't know if it's all, you know, for show or not. I, I don't know, but they seem like they're sincere, and, and uh, I don't want to take anything away from Phil Spencer or the other guy, but but when I think of Xbox, and, this is, and I met Steve Baker through my original Xbox Facebook group, and we became very good friends right off the bat because I could see that he has an, a massive affinity for the Xbox like I do. And when I really think of an Xbox ambassador, I think of Steve Baker. To me, he's way more, because he's the real deal. I don't know Phil Spencer from a pole on the wall, you know. But Steve, I know. And Steve has proven that he's a wonder. You can see an old video I did of him, of his collection. Very knowledgeable, and he really is passionate. I remember he just got his first tattoo less than a year ago. And what did he get? He got, he got a Gears of War logo. He's like a diehard Xbox fan. I mean, I just love the guy to death. I wish he'd get out of California. I worry about him in these fucking fires. They've been evacuating people in West Sac where he lives, you know, over by the airport there. I've been worried about him. But, you know, he's got a lot of responsibility. He's got a good job there. His kids are there. And so it's tough for him to just pick up and move. But <clears throat> anyway, um, very, very happy. Thank you, Steve. You know, you really, truly are the ambassador of Xbox. And thank you for being patient with me and helping me talk me through setting it all up and showing me all the cool things it can do and how to install the games and everything. I, the guy's really is worth his weight in gold. He's just a real, genuinely wonderful human being. Um, I, again, I went in and played Black for the first time. My God, the loading screens, it looks so sharp. Take full screen, 16 by nine format. The sound is just fucking unreal. It's just unbelievably good. I, every game I have played so far on it, whether it has the upscale enhancement with a real high resolution or not, has been very, very impressive. Uh, very, very impressive. I'm just I'm blown away. I, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Uh, now, I do have a few pickups that I have. I'll quickly show those. I got, um, I went out and bought a Microsoft $25 card because one of the favorite games I would really was looking forward to. I, I wanted to immediately go out and get it next. I think it was like two years ago they came out with a game called Flying Tigers Shadows Over China. And I and I asked Steve, oh, do, can you, you know, do, have you seen that game? I've never seen it available. He's, well, dude, it's not, a, you can't get a physical copy. Unfortunately, it's a digital only game, so you can play it on PC or on the Xbox One. So I got it, it was like 18 bucks or 18.99 or something. So I just downloaded it last night. God, is it good. A very solid World War II flight game, a great array of allied planes, Japanese planes, a campaign, you know, multiplayer, which I will never touch or care about, but very, very impressive. Really good physics, uh, as good as any flight game I've played on the seventh gen. And you cannot find, I think there's like maybe one or two, but there's like virtually very few or no World War II flight games anymore for this gen. They're all last gen and 6th and 7th gen. It's like, what happened to them? Yeah, they got the Ace Combat ones and, you know, Assault Horizon and all that stuff, but <clears throat> there really is nothing. So I was th just thrilled to download it last night, and I couldn't stop playing the dogfight modes, and I'm anxious to roll my sleeves up in the campaign. I play the advanced flight controls. I, I can't do this. They have an arcade mode, which is overly simplified, but even the advanced flight, once you get the swing of the trim and getting the rudder just right, it's a joy. My God, you can roll that thing, bank it. You can bring the throttle way back and make a really tight bank turn and get in behind your enemy and line up a shot and blow them up. It's just absolutely amazing. 
very cool. But I did pick up a few uh, other Xbox games, just a couple. I went the other night, my wife went to the mall, I went found a new game stop, um, which again, the one that had all the controllers. This one near my house is a very poor selection. They just picked over because of the COVID crap. So I've got a brand new Crackdown 3, another reason why I, finally, when this came out, I said that's it. I finally have, you know, my third uh, major exclusive it gave me a reason to get an Xbox. I know a lot of people bag on this game. I played the first Crackdown for like 90 minutes the other night in 4K, I might add. Looks fucking unbelievable. And I, and I was so hooked on it, I forgot the, the crack addict addiction of going after those orbs. So I started watching, I watched, watched Solid Rad as a rewatch. I watched it recently. His take on Crackdown 3, which is quite A lot of people thought, oh, you're doing damage control for Microsoft, all this bullshit. He says, no, dude, the game ain't perfect, but it's a hell of a lot of fun, and here's why. And uh, to me, what sold me on this was a really killer verticality. I love games with just tremendous verticality because I'm like, terrified of heights even as a painter I'm like I'll climb a 28 foot ladder but I don't dig it at all I like I don't look down I just like hold on and I'm just do what's right in front of me like a horse with blinders go down and move the ladder and go up and do it again so I can't wait to play this I thought the first one I've climbed the very first the highest tower and the first crackdown multiple times I've scaled it to the very top spear and then dove off into a little uh, lake down below it's very cool but I'm very excited about playing this Desperados 3, I watched Carrot at ACG, did a fantastic, very positive, enthusiastic review of this. I cannot fucking wait to play this. I put this in and, and just did the tutorial through it. Very impressive. And in 4K. This is in 4K with HDR and some of the best HDR I've ever seen, just based on some of the reviews I've watched. And I have the, the ultimate HDR 4K TV. I mean, you cannot bet, get a better, brighter more dynamic TV. I know LG's got, you know, more authentic, you know, uh, uh, color and all this stuff, but my TV for a bright TV that has just smoking hot HDR and, and 4K is just spellbinding. It really is. This isn't 4K. The detail, you can see like little scorpions running through the dirt, little geckos climbing up the side of the wall. It's very, very cool. I, Steve, I love this, this TV. This 1X is just... Amazing. I mean, I thought the PS4 Pro couldn't be top, but I'm very impressed. And then I got this Black Sad. This is a game that there's a wonderful writer and artist. I think they're in Spain or France or maybe France and Spain. And it's a comic series. In fact, I did some research. There's five comic books with this series for this character. And I'm going to have my wife get it. You can get it for like 25 bucks from Barnes & Noble or on Amazon. And there's a compilation now you can get of all five comic books in one nice book. I love graphic novels. This one's very cool. It's like a kind of like an L.A. noir. It takes place in the 50s. Detective in L.A. It's got the jazz. It's got all the, the moody environments and everything. But it has this, this kind of an anim, anim, anamorphic um, animal type thing. Kind of like Disney where they take animals and make them like people. It's the same concept. This is a special edition. It comes with like this kind of a 3D... Um, really cool like little card placard thing picture and then it came with these really cool characters from the comic book beautifully done with real nice backs on them of all the characters which from the reviews I've seen I've watched some spoiler free reviews of it it looks very very good so I, I was lucky to find dirt cheap so basically for the price of one new game I got three Xbox games for like 60 bucks I was happy as a clam at high tide to get these. So now I've got a total of, I guess, like six new, you know, physical Xbox One games. So my collection's grown. i got a nice little head start going already. Very, very happy with that. And I don't mind doing the Microsoft card thing. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind doing that whatsoever. But I did get a few pickups. I'll quickly show them here. Um, I went to my retro store. I went over to get my prescription at Costco. It wasn't ready. So, oh, can you come back in an hour? Well, the retro store is right across the street, VIP. I hadn't been there in a long time. I went over and talked to the owner there, and we had a great time. And he's pretty picked over with a few games. I went, well, I, now because of the backwards compatibility, I'm like, oh, God, I'm missing this one and that one. So I got the full Scrotum Warrior game, which I want. I mean, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I, uh, the full Spectrum Warrior. I've wanted this for a long time. This was a game developed for the U.S. Army for training, and you can actually put in a cheat code and play that version, or you can play it's kind of like a tactical squad-based Kind of like Freedom Fighters, 
very cool and it looks really enhanced it plays great on the xbox one x very happy and i got the sphinx and the curse mummy game very very cool i've always wanted this i found it like two or three times it's always missing the manual and i won't buy a game unless it's all complete and everything so uh thrilled to have this and this looks really really fucking good on the xbox one x and this is not the greatest game. This is the best reviews. It's got some of the worst voice acting imaginable and very wooden-looking character <laughs> animations. But it's a very unique game. And it's called Raven Squad. Kind of like an RTS mixed with an FPS. Very odd. You can play it like a top-down and then go into first-person mode. Control your troops either way personally. One up high or low. Kind of like um, XCOM, the Bureau to Classify. Kind of similar. We can play it from a couple different vantage points. Very cool. I, I like to collect these games. Eventually, I'll, I'll try this out. And this game is also backwards compatible. One of the only Battlefield games I don't have, and that's Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. Really more of a multiplayer game, but it has a, an offline single-player mode that's quite challenging. So, thrilled to find this, too. So, yeah, a few games, and then I got just a couple um, PlayStation 4 games. I had this pre-ordered and got it up the day it came out. Sadly, it was kind of buggy as hell, so I've been waiting for the patch to come. I think the patch just came out for it. In fact, I think it even has a second patch. So the performance I, appears to be much better. I started to go and doing the character creation in it, which I got like a couple hours, and my God, it's like overwhelming with choice. It's like insane. I love the first Wasteland when I played on my C64, and I love the Wasteland 2 Director's Cut my wife got me for my birthday several birthdays ago. And that one I never finished. I got so deep into it. I really need to finish that one. This is so much better. Microsoft bought them out, the studio, and they gave them money. Just do it. Take your time. Do it right. They get voice acting for all instead of reading everything. It's all voice acted. Beautiful animations, close-up animations of the people talking for the main characters. Very impressive. Wonderful special effects. A lot of refinements and improvements over the original one. I'm a huge RTS Fan, you know, from the original XCOM, I got all the XCOM games, and for you know both console generations, I've got um, Command and Conquer. The only one I'm missing is Cam Command and Conquer's Kane's Wrath. I definitely need to get that one. I can't find that to save my life. I haven't seen that game in a couple of years now, um, and I've got other you know other RTS games as well. But very very cool. It's one of my favorite genres. I got the other um, Mutant Year Zero and the DLC for that recently as well. Very, that's a good starter game for people kind of new to the RTS genre. Very good. And then the final game I got, which I have been looking for for a physical version for some while, um, is Subnautica. Finally, I've got a beautiful copy. This game looks very immersive and very cool. Now, I got the Outer Wilds, which I digitally downloaded, but I haven't tried it yet. But this looks really good. It looks beautiful. It looks scary as hell in some parts. Very immersive and this uh, enormous game. You can play a lot of things and never see a lot of things in it. This looks very, very cool. I'm very, I have them both installed. And, and again, I'm going nuts with there's just so much choice right now. Um, and then I also got real quickly, I, I went through and played all seven seasons of the Clone Wars, which I've got, you know, on loop behind me here. My wife got me the Star Wars Rebels series. I've got, you know, season one, which I, I've played through. I'm, I'm into season two, about halfway through season two now. Very impressive. I thought that the Clone Wars was good. Kind of a different animation style on this, but very good. And then I've got epi you know, seasons three and four as well. So I've got all four seasons of this. Very good. I can't recommend the Clone Wars enough, guys. If you love Star Wars, this is based on real George Lucas canon with Dave Filoni. They put a lot of time and thought. Dave Filoni's very loyal to George. He won't do anything that wouldn't be in George's head or in his kind of his lore and canon. Very cool. And now that sadly George isn't involved with Rebels, but Filoni is. And he's very loyal and dedicated to George Lucas's true vision, not that garbage that Disney. I'll never refuse to watch that crap, those three latest movies. I'll never ever watch them. Because if you went way off the beam with it, you know, that's not George's vision. But anyway, I don't go off on a tangent. You can do a whole, you know, hour long rant on Star Wars. But uh, anyway, very happy to have this. George has seen these and he approves and he loves them. Very cool series. I think they're working on a new one called The Bad Batch, which is a series that came out of the Clone Wars. But anyway, those are my pickups I have. Very, very happy with those. Um, 
but yeah, you know, there's not a lot of flight games. Like I said, I got that um, Flying Tigers game, and I have just so I'll quickly show up a handful here. You get a bunch of these games from the sixth gen. My when, this is my favorite sixth gen flight game, Heroes Over the Pacific. Uh, they have a follow-up that came on the 360 and the PlayStation 3 called Heroes Over Europe, which I'd highly recommend. The best World War II game, I think. Um, the Secret Weapons Over Normandy is another outstanding one. Steven Spielberg had his hand in this. This I played through a couple times. An awesome game. I've never played the Blazing Angels, but I have do have Blazing Angels 1, Blazing Angels 2 on the 360, and then the Birds of Steel and this IL-2 Stormovic. Uh, I have, and I, there's a massive amount of DLC for both of these, but anyway, I highly recommend if you have an Xbox One, if you have any affinity for flight games, pick up that download for 18, 19 bucks at Flying Tigers, Shadows Over China. Very, very good. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to show you, um, you know, a few pickups and wonderful gifts. Thank you, Tyler and Stevenson. Thank you, Steve Baker. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been so good to me, and I really appreciate the love support for the channel and for my gaming and I'll just end this and say this I know a lot of you for years I've for the last few years I've been buying a lot of games but I haven't been playing that many a lot of you think oh that's good Dean buys games he never plays them anymore what's wrong with him he's not a gamer he's a collector and all this bullshit well what you don't realize is since November of 2015 I've herniated not one but two discs and then recently since the last you know 16 months I tore one of them bad. I have been in tremendous pain. I've been sitting here for a long time. I have a lot of really bad post-surgery pain. But you know what, guys? My initial lower back problem is healed. It's gone. Completely fucking gone. I have been. I woke up this morning laying on, completely on my back. I couldn't lay on my back for 30 seconds. I was just, oh, God, no. I, I couldn't drive for more than 20 to 30 minutes. I've been driving around. Yeah, I'm sore getting in and out, making transitions because of the, all the muscles they cut through. There's a lot of healing and it's intense, and I've got a lot of pain pills I'm taking for that, I'm trying to wean down off them, but it's been very painful. This has been a horrible recovery in some respects, but you know what? I've had literally tears of joy over the aspect. I've been gaming for up to three hours recently, and no, and I don't pay at all for it. I can play for hours. I love it. It's so good. So now I've got five years of games, a backlog of games, from, you know, the Wolfenstein Colossus 2 and, my God, Rage 2 and the 2016 um, Doom I can finally play and Doom Eternal. I mean, and I've got another, you know, 100 games or God knows how many I've collected and bought, you know, because I want to play these games, you know. I've got the, the remastered Bulletstorm, you know, with Duke Nukem. In. I've got so many games I've wanted to play back through and I couldn't do it. I, I played, I've got about four hours into that new Terminator Resistance right before I moved here and I paid for that for weeks afterwards my back was so fucked and I just was god why why did I do it you know and Solid Rev goes you didn't finish that game yet I said dude I, I can't I, I tried I really did I tried one night I put two hours in and it just it just beat me up for weeks afterwards this move just took a shovel to my back and all the doctors in California no one could fix it I found I have three doctors here. One of them is one of the best neurosurgeons in the state. He says, no, no, I look, here's your MRI. Here's your problem right here. This is why you're in so much pain. He goes, right, here's the tear. Here's the problem. I'm going to remove this disc. I'm going to remove the disc above it. Your pain will be gone. You, you'll never feel it. Now, I, you're going to have some pinched nerves and arthritis. That I can't do anything about. You'll have some leg pain and numbness from your other faucet, you know, nerves and stuff that are, da are damaged and crimp nerves and stuff. But, but I can take get rid of your main pain and my god he did you realize what this means this means i can go back to mad max oh, steve is giving me a uh, uh, mad max you know send it in the mail with something else i don't know what the hell it is steve <laughs> thank you so much dude I, i've had four attempts 270 hours failed attempts at mad max the playstation 4 it, it, it falls apart even my good friend mikey who beat it, played all the way through in the PlayStation 4 Pro. So the game starts off good, but near the end, when you find all the loot and you do all the side things, the game starts literally tearing itself apart on the PlayStation 4. And even on the Pro, it cannot handle it. It's the fucking proprietary software, or the game engine that fucking Avalanche did. It's just, it's weird. And, and so I'm hoping the Xbox, a lot of people have had better luck on the Xbox One. So I'm excited to replay Mad Max. I want to play it from the beginning. For the fifth time, I never even got to the big race.
I found every loot spot. I did all the death races. I did. I was so loving the game, savoring every inch of that game, and it just kept failing me and crashing and crashing and game breaking bugs. I just for someone who's my favorite game, I had the worst luck in it. So I'm hoping on the good old Xbox, I'm going to have better luck, and I know that I will. I just I just can feel it in my bones. So anyway, guys, the good news is I can game. And I'm excited. I'm putting in two hours one night, three hours the next. My wife stopped me after this three hours. Oh, I'm worried about your pack. Please stop. I'm afraid you're going to pay for it. I said, okay, I'll stop. The next day, I'm like, sweetie, I feel fine. I, it does, I don't feel it. I'm, I'm still sore as hell from where they cut the fuck out of my back and the bone graft and everything. But that's going to heal. In time, they said it's going to take six months. And by the sixth month, it, I shouldn't feel the pain anymore. So it's a long, painful process. I'm sore right now sitting here, but I don't have the problems. Getting in and out of cars, long car rides, sitting. I couldn't sit at all. Now I can sit with my back. I can lay down on my stomach. I can wake up sleeping on my back. I mean, that's unheard of. I, I literally am, this is like a new lease on life. You know what, it's, can you imagine if you love gaming and all of a sudden something happens to you and you're fucked and you can no longer game more than 30 to 60 minutes? You know what that does to your soul? For someone like me that loves gaming, it was like the worst punishment or, or horrible thing I've been through since November of 2015. This is literally is a new lease on life. So I, I can't tell you what this means to me, guys. I'm so excited. Thank you all for staying with me and supporting me all these years. Even though I couldn't game, it didn't mean I wasn't passionate about games. didn't mean I couldn't talk about my gaming experiences from the past and what I'm looking forward to. And that's why I continued to buy the games, because I knew someday I would get back to them, and I would enjoy them. I was just waiting for someone to fix my problem. Just like trying to find a good mechanic. Your car, you take it everywhere, no one can fix it. Finally, you find a wizard, a car wizard that knows how to fix it, and he goes, oh, here, here's your problem right here. Fixed. Enjoy. And that's where I'm at. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this. A little long, but I'm just so excited. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you, Steve and Tyler Stevenson. For the wonderful console gifts, you guys have made my year, literally. I'm very, very happy. Thank you all. Enjoy your games and enjoy your collections.